Design landscapes and ornamental gardens are complex, expressive, three-dimensional organic art forms. And because peaceful and prosperous conditions are required for their construction, so they act as barometers of civilization. The first gardens were created in ancient Egypt, since when every civilization has developed its own forms and styles of ornamental garden. Mankind therefore enjoys an uninterrupted history of landscape design and garden art that exceeds four millennia and encircles the globe. But in addition to being a creative and much overlooked three-dimensional art form, gardens were and are an integral component of the culture and society in which they were made, and as such exerted considerable influence on and reacted to their zeitgeist. This course will provide an introduction to the fascinating and diverse subject of global garden art and its history. And along the journey, we will also answer the question, why were gardens in particular civilizations made the way they were? Hello there, my name is Toby Musgrave and welcome to lesson one. In this lesson, we will explore the earliest gardens made. In the West, we'll be looking the first garden making culture, the ancient Egyptians, the origins of paradise in Mesopotamia, before examining the gardens of Greece and Rome. Egypt was and is a desert land, its civilization restricted to a narrow ribbon along the banks of the life giving river Nile. And just to put the civilization in context, Ancient Egypt begins with the early dynastic period in about 3000 BCE. The Great Pyramid of Cheops dates to about 2560 BCE, and for comparison, the Great Monument of Stonehenge dates to about 2500 BCE. May I walk every day on the banks of the water. May my soul rest on the branches of the trees which I planted. May I refresh myself under the shadow of my sycamore. An ancient Egyptian tomb inscription from about 1400 BCE. The first Egyptian gardens would have been for cultivation of food. And tomb paintings from the Old Kingdom, 2868 to 2181 BCE, show beds divided into squares, growing vegetables and irrigated with water from the Nile. Today, when we think of ancient Egypt, we think of the wonderful archaeological finds, the buildings, and of course the archaeological artefacts, most of which have come from tombs. And in fact, ancient Egypt was essentially a cult of the dead. The life led on the earth was a way to prepare for a better afterlife. The spirit of the deceased undertook a long and perilous journey through the underworld to the Hall of Judgment where one's heart was weighed against a feather. The worthy souls, whose heart was lighter than the feather, would reach the afterlife paradise of the field of reeds, or Aru. Essentially, Aru was a better version of the Nile Valley, complete with gardens. Thus, the gardens made in life were also an imitation of what was hoped for in the afterlife and tomb paintings, papyri, and other archaeological evidence shows what both the earthly and the hopeful afterlife gardens look like. Here, a tomb painting shows a large pool surrounded by a wealth of flowering plants and trees. Given that Egypt has a hot, sunny and dry climate, it is not surprising that ancient Egyptian gardens were designed as a retreat from the elements and the surrounding desert. Walled in to keep out the elements and unwanted guests, be they animal or human, ancient Egyptian gardens were cool and shady havens, rich with colourful flowers and fruit-bearing trees, and enlivened with the sound and sight of moving water. Here we have workers lifting water to irrigate a garden, but what did the overall garden look like? The most famous tomb painting of a garden was found in Theban tomb TT96 and is that of Senefer, high official of Amenhotep III, 
the ninth pharaoh of the 18th dynasty, about 1400 BCE. At first glance, the most striking feature of the design is its formal and geometric regularity. In fact, this gun displays axial symmetry along the line A to B.